Hi, and welcome back to another C Sharp video tutorial for the C Sharp beginner scores for the Stride game engine. In this tutorial, we learn about mouse input. As you can see, I've opened up the mouse input tutorial from the C Sharp beginner template project. And right here in front of me, I have four colored teapots. I also have this entity called mouse input which has a mouse input demo script attached and the four colored teapots, they are referenced into this script. What we're going to do is we're going to look at the various ways that we can address the mouse buttons and whether we are holding down a mouse button or whether we are releasing a mouse button and we're going to use that to rotate these teapots around. In our update method, the first thing that we're going to do here is we're going to check whether we actually have a mouse connected to our computer. And all we have to do is say if input dot has mouse. This returns a boolean value or is a boolean value. And if it's true, then it means we have a mouse. So the first teapot, which is the blue teapot in our scene, we're going to rotate that around when the left mouse button is being held down. So in order for us to do that, all we have to say is if input is mouse button down, and then between the parentheses, we have to specify which mouse button it is about. So we're going to say mouse button dot left, and this gives us the leftmost mouse button. Then in between the parentheses, the first thing that we need to do is get the delta time, which we can get through game dot update time elapsed dot total seconds. And then we have this blue teapot, which is already referenced into the script. We can say transform rotation and let's multiply that with quaternion dot rotation y. And all we have to do here is specify a rotation value and that needs to be multiplied with that delta time value. So let's see how this looks when we start our game. So we're going to go to the mouse input tutorial. And here we are with the four teapots. And if I hold down the left mouse button, our teapot starts rotating around its Y axis. Okay, so far so good. Now let's copy these lines and this time instead of checking if the mouse button is being held down, let's check if a mouse button is being pressed and then released right away. So as soon as it's being pressed, we trigger the event. We can say is mouse button pressed for that and let's go for the right mouse button this time and since this is only a single event we have to apply the rotation right away. So instead of multiplying it several times with the quaternion value, let's rotate it one time and one time only. Let's also change the blue teapot to the next teapot, which is the yellow teapot. And let's see if this code is working. So as soon as we press that right mouse button, our yellow teapot should be rotating or should rotate that single uh, rotation value. So I, so as you can hear, every time I click the right mouse button, the action is being performed. Then we'll move on to the next mouse button event. And that is the is mouse button released. The is mouse button released looks a lot like the is mouse button pressed, but instead of it being triggered right away when the mouse is being pressed for the first time, the event is triggered when the mouse button is being released again. So here we have to say is mouse button released. And let's go for the mouse wheel this time. So if we click the mouse wheel, then we perform this action. And instead of the yellow teapot, let's do the green teapot. And let's rotate that one in a different direction. Let's check it out how this looks.
we select mouse input and then the green teapot if I I'm holding down the mouse wheel right now and if I would let go of it it performs the rotation so I'm holding it down and letting it go and then it performs that rotation so now we have the three common mouse button events that we can trigger in our update method but we can also look at the scroll wheel activity of our mouse wheel so in order for us to keep track of what scroll index we're at we need to create a variable on top so let's do that right here private float scroll index and by default we'll set that to zero then back in our update script we'll do scroll index plus input mouse wheel delta this gives us back a value of the current mouse wheel delta of the particular frame that we are in so if we would scroll forward we would get a value of one and if we would scroll backwards one step we would get a value of minus one for clarity's sake let's add the scroll index as a text to our screen so let's say debug text dot print we're going to print out that scroll index we'll have to do to string and then we'll do new int to and then use some coordinates to draw to there we go let's also rotate the fourth teapot which is the pink teapot with that new scroll index dot transform rotation is quaternion dot rotation y and this time we have to set a very small value because we can scroll very fast with our mouse uh, in some cases you can scroll in small increments but a lot of modern mouses they have this little button that allows you to smooth scroll which will apply a lot of scrolling to our teapot so i'm going to say 0 0.02 uh, float and we have to multiply that with that scroll index that we have and let's see how this looks in our game We go to the mouse input tutorial and as you can see we have the text printed between the blue and the yellow teapot and currently our index is zero and if i scroll forward one increment we get this very slight rotation of this pink teapot and if i would uh, press my mouse button so that smooth scrolling is enabled and i perform a, a simple scroll movement then my mouse wheel gets or keeps on rotating until the mouse wheel stops and then the rotation of our teapot stops as well and for the same thing if we would scroll backwards if i do this in in steps then we get the lovely incrementation of our rotation the last thing that we're going to do in this tutorial is have a look what the actual mouse position is and what we can do with that mouse position so let's just copy that debug text line and move it a little bit down and instead of printing out the scroll index i'm going to say mouse position followed by the actual mouse position that we're going to retrieve in a variable up top and we can retrieve two kinds of mouse position the first one is input dot mouse position and this will retrieve the normalized coordinates of the mouse so uh, think about a value of zero and one somewhere in that range and that is not really the mouse position that i'm interested in because if we are going to draw our text to the screen we're going to require coordinates from the top left of our game screen which is 0, 0.0 and then all the way to the right let's say that our game window is 400 pixels wide then we would require a value between 0 and 400. so instead of the mouse position property we need to go for the absolute mouse position 
So all we have to do now is pass in that value between the new int2 variable here, and let's also pass that in as the text that we're going to print to the screen. So now it will say mouse position followed by the actual mouse position. Let's start our game one last time. And if we click on mouse input, notice how now the text mouse position followed by the actual coordinates, the absolute position of the mouse is being printed to the screen at the exact same coordinates that our mouse is actually at. So if we would move our mouse all the way to the top left of our screen, notice how we are approaching the 0.0, .0 coordinate. And if we move to the right, we get the screen width, which is the x axis. And if we go down, notice how we get a positive y value. So that's something to keep in mind. We start at coordinate 0, 0. The positive x axis is to the right and the positive y value is going down. That's it for this tutorial. I hope you learned something. In the next tutorial, we'll look at another input method, which is the keyboard.